After making the thinking with Montreux demo, I realized that I should explain what you see on the screen compared to the conventional programming. Although it's natural to me, that is a result of decades of off-the-grid software design and development, so I should point at the funny spots. First, Montreux is a visual interpreter. I have seen some YouTube videos praising Python for its ability to prove a console where you can immediately see the language constructs in an online environment, try functions, see results, etc. Well, Java can do on-the-fly compile and method updates since 2002, I guess. In a standard IDE like Eclipse Debug, you can see through any complete running system the same way change data values or modify codes and repeat that part again if you consider data mutability and keep the class structure. That is still just a smarter way of editing text where you flatten your ideas. With any language you also accept inconvenient limitations coming from technical issues and from paradigms like OOP that distorts your thinking. Montreux is a visual online development environment this is what I will compare with what you must do in an ID and programming language, if you can do it at all. So right now, behind the screen, there is a complete Dust Montreux interpreter, an entity cloud that contains all the types, messages and entity instances needed to make Dust Montreux work. The left panel is an entity finder. The searching content text is looked up in all text attributes of all entities. The type filter checks if the selected type exists in an entity. The result appears in the matching entities list. The bottom text area is the to string of the selected entity. If you drag a, drag a type on the desktop, then it creates a new type. Now it's a type type and say that it's, uh, it will be the vehicle. If now you have created your first class. First the name is empty, but change it to vehicle. If you look closely, the new type appears on the left type filter immediately, and its name changes as you rename the type on the screen, illustrating the online nature of the system. Let's create a Java version. Here is the vehicle class. If you drag the vehicle type on the desktop, you get a new vehicle instance. I create a main function to follow the things you see on the screen. At this point, I have created a vehicle instance. But let's stop for a moment here because you see a property page of the newly created vehicle class. So here, you must also create a vehicle panel and a vehicle frame classes and assume that the system already contains panels for the other types. Put the entity panel and the vehicle panel into the vehicle frame. Well, that's very nice, but it's uh, quite empty. First of all, I would like to add an identifier to my vehicle that goes by dragging the, the identified type on the vehicle entity. Now I can set an identifier. Let's say it's uh, truck01. That's very nice. So I have a truck here. Oops. At this point, I have extended the vehicle instance with data content from another class, the identified. Even if I did this on meta level, this would be multiple inheritance, but I did this on instance level. Again, I changed the meta structure of a live object instance. Objective-C has such feature at runtime, but in general, at this point, any standard object-oriented language says, <laughs> goodbye, we can do that. As you see, vehicle frame now includes the identified panel, so to say. Of course, you can do that by typing the code, compile and deploy again, but you still can't do that behind a live environment, as you saw it right here. But this is not the funniest part. As I type the name of the identifier, the header is updated immediately. In a code, that means the identified local member variable is private member. You had to create getters and setters, manage change listeners, and add all the screen elements that displays this variable to the listener list, including the edit box where you are typing right now, but avoid infinite loops. In most systems, this part becomes quite messy, or use some toolkits that generates the GUI codes, and in general, your system gets locked to that GUI library, 
platform or that multi-platform GUI wrapper if you happen to use one. Um, I would like to have another track. That's fine. I just drag it with the control. So uh, this can be identified as track 02. I made a clone of the live object instance with the tweaked meta structure, taking care of the references as well. As you see, the lines indicate the clone entity is connected to the same instances automatically. Imagine the code you should have written, just cloning it. Long, boring and very fragile. It tends to divert from the structure and the parallel serialization code after a few refactors. However, you can't write that code because the instance has a different meta structure than you described when you started the system. Well, in this case, that vehicle class did not even exist when I launched Montru. So I can't type that code. I only extend the desktop Java with the new instance. Okay, I have two trucks, but <laughs> this is quite empty right now. Uh, so I want to do something is um, a setting attributes uh, uh, to the vehicle type so I can set uh, the actual values in, in the trucks. That is done by uh, creating attribute definitions. Maybe I would like to um, set the coordinates of the vehicles by saying that uh, I will have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Um, in order to uh, make this connection, of course, I have to say that the vehicle type is the parent of the at X attribute definition. As you see, right now, uh, under the vehicle uh, type or model, uh, the X is appearing. So I can say that this is 10 and maybe this is 20. Well, I should create another attribute for storing the, the Y coordinate. So I just type in that it's Y. As you see, it also appeared. Let's make it 30 and 40. And maybe just add speed, I guess. And maybe also add maximum speed. And now I'm very happy. I have lots of information that I can store for uh, my trucks. Maybe truck 02 is going by 10 kilometers per hour and the truck 01 is standing. At this point, I have extended the vehicle class with the new attribute X. As detailed above, in code, this should be behind getters and setters with proper listener management and so on. You also must extend the vehicle panel with the new edit box to display and change the value of X. I also update desktop Java with the local modifications. Then I go on with other attributes. Imagine the amount of code. I don't want to type that in. But then I just see that the maximum speed, the maximum speed information doesn't really belong to the trucks themselves. Um, they belong to the truck type. Well, I should create truck uh, vehicle type. Uh, type in this case. Let's create a new type that will be the type. Type. Very nice. Uh, and let's see that the maximum speed attribute should. Uh, be connected to the vehicle type instead of the vehicle. Very nice. It just disappeared. Let's recap what happened right here. You have started to describe the system by adding members to the vehicle class and setting values in your desktop Java when you realize that an attribute does not belong where you first put it. You hit an is a has a question. You responded to the new understanding with refactoring your system, created a vehicle type type, a vehicle type panel, a vehicle type frame, also moved the max speed and the whole listener update mechanism from the vehicle panel to the vehicle type panel. <laughs> Good job. Although it has nothing to do with your system. It's mere housekeeping. Okay, but uh, how can I set it again? Um, 
First of all, I should, of course, create a vehicle type. Uh, maybe I can set the, the maximum speed now. It will be maybe 40 kilometers per hour. And of course, I would like to identify this type. So just connect uh, to the vehicle type and I say that this is a slow vehicle type. Uh, the only thing I would like to do is to connect um, the vehicle type to the actual vehicles. How can I do this? Uh, similar to the attribute definitions, I can create link definitions. Uh, I create a new link definition called type and the same way as I did before, the vehicle type should be the parent Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I have to uh, connect the vehicle type as the parent of this type link. So now you see, under the vehicle segment, I can see a type. And I can connect my slow vehicle type as the type of my truck 01 and 02. So right now I am able to uh, set uh, different information in the vehicle type level instead of uh, the vehicles themselves. So you can, they can use the same uh, instance of, of vehicle type. So at this point you have utilized the vehicle type class, created an instance, tweaked its structure locally so you can identify it, set the identifier. Also modify the vehicle class so that it can hold a single instance reference to a vehicle type instance. Updated the vehicle panel so that you can manage the reference in a quite convenient way and set the type of your vehicles. <laughs> Believe me, this gesture-based editing is not a simple feat in Java, but the most intuitive I could come up with. And it worked because I had to write it only once for all connections I will ever make among any instance, as long as I use Montru. But then I have a different problem. I realize that the X and Y coordinates uh, belong to, not, not actually belong to the vehicles themselves, but that's a location. And I want to create other locations um, in, in my map. For example, the, the storage area where the trucks should move around. So, well, I should refactor this whole thing. Uh, first of all, maybe you get used to it. I have to create a new type called location. Uh, very nice, but I should just clean a bit here. So I just close the vehicle type, I close the attribute definition, so I see a bit more about it. And I would like to say that each vehicle can have, or should have now, a location model inside the entity. So let's see. Now it's, both of them have uh, locations. But I should move the X and Y coordinates uh, over to the location. Of course, this is done by setting the parent of the attributes to, no, not the speed, not the speed, but the X coordinate. Here we are. And now, uh, on all uh, track uh, property pages, you can see that the uh, actual values of these uh, attributes have moved over to the location um, in, in this refactor uh, activity. Of course, that's not, not a surprise because that's uh, not related to, uh, this is actually related to the attribute definition. And the attribute definition entity is the same. 
regardless of uh, my changing the parent uh, link between the, the type and the attribute definition. The same refactory example, but at this time you already have values assigned in each vehicle entities to the attributes you want to move to another type. To do that, you should update the desktop Java according to the new names and structures. I have no valid language construct in Java to do that on instance level, so <laughs> this code will not work. And uh, just for, <laughs> for fun, um, and then for more convenience, uh, I would like to say that uh, whenever I create a new vehicle, it should have an identified and a location uh, type added uh, to it. Uh, how can I do it? I would say that I modify the type definition itself, uh, add the connected uh, model to it, and say that whenever I uh, pick up a vehicle, it requires the existence of a location type and also an identified type. They are all required in this case. So whenever I create a new vehicle from now on, that already contains uh, the identified attributes. So I can say that it's struck 03 and it's 80 and 90 locations. Here I demonstrate that you can manage the meta level objects with the same tools as your own system level instances. This is a significant difference from what you have, for example, with reflection in Java, which is a read only view of your structure. This layer is completely transparent to you or to itself. If you make a change, you can modify the behavior of the environment. In this case, I introduced multiple inheritance to the vehicle class and thus changed the execution of the new vehicle operation as demonstrated with truck zero. I just started to think about a new system that will manage trucks and already uh, collected lots of information and refactored uh, what and where I would like to store. I could compare Montreux with software design tools like Rational Tools or Enterprise Architect, but I see no reason in that. They are the most expensive development aids created by big names with hundreds of developers and vast number of features. I used them in some serious projects as an architect and developer. But on the other hand, they accept the limitations of their numerous target environments, while I focus on a fundamentally different approach – avoid or break those barriers. In short, I play a different game. I hope this lower level comparison could show the advantage of a visual, online and all-in-one development environment, which is Montreux. Thank you.